Right, I'm rolling. Right. All right, quiet everybody, thank you. Okay. Then let's do Miss Nut. <laughs> <laughs> Okay then, rolling yeah? Yep. Yeah. Joe, you, if you could just introduce yourself for the camera, please. Oh, well, I'm Big Yield. Yeah, they call me Jai Yield. Tell us how you first got started at, as a toaster in this business. Well, it happened in a time when there was nothing much that people were saying. And I think the time was like, no, you know, conflicting and confusing. You understand? So it's like we need more inspiration, something more than baby, baby. That was when Big Youth comes in with the whole Jalov thing, because, you know, everybody was having a date with baby and Chickabow and whatever. So. I come with a Rasta concept, you know, a poetical, spiritual form where you tell people must make love and not war and come together, you know. So, like I always answer to a lot of them baby things inside the dance. So people start requesting, well, boy, Jayuti should go and make some music now. So. The first set that you came to prominence on was Tipper Town. Yes, Tipper Town is a hometown town. Right, like downtown Kingston, you know, and Princess Street, Matches Lane, and all those places. And we used to have other guys like Wang Chu and playing Tipper Town. And Wang Chu, is that the same Justice? No, Justice, Justice is like with. Black Harmony, that comes after. So, that, Just Itch was also on Tipperton early days as well, though. So, he told us yesterday. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't disqualify it and I wouldn't really say that. But you would be like a part of the family, same time, you know that. Because that's where they used to learn the business. Well, well it so happens that. One night we went to a dance in Papin. This was a sound I wrote the president playing and somebody steal all the records and the DJ was afraid to turn up. And I took the mic with the Sata Master gun and created a prayer and a whole scene and that was where we know something was developing, you know? And from there it went bigger. Yes, then between Gregory Isaac and Jimmy Radway, they took me to the studio and we did the movie star and the black Cinderella. And everybody started running big good. When you first came on the scene, as you said earlier, you came with a different set of, a, a different lyrical conception to the DJs were go before. Yeah, because like I would come, my first word was that if you're coming from far in a bus or a car, I'm asking you to make love and not war. I'm so sad to say that when you deal with war, you have to stay far. You have to make things right and do things right to stay right. You know, so I think it was a statement. And from there, we make a little thrill about Cinderella and where I find my black Cinderella. And it all started, gusses started to come by, we do the killer for Joe Gibbs, so we stay, Foreman and Fraser. Another Friday come by and Keith Hudson came and we did the big number one S90 scan. The same day we did another number one, Chicharon, Prince Buster, Levius King at home and I don't know what to say, but it was so, tell us about Keith Hudson. What was he like to work with? One of them hustlers. You understand, guy? It's like... It's, it's if you can mention his name. Keith Hudson. Yeah. No, like I said earlier, it, 
is in the, is in the, the, the A days. One of them hustlers, a guy, people just doing business, people just doing what they don't know what they're doing or want to do something for themselves, you know what I'm saying? Because like, like we made that big song, you know, I wrote it, I did everything. It's not this gang who even took a bike in the studio, it's our idea. Look man, sometimes when we mention some of them things, it's grieving, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, it's some of the things that really happened big, but nothing out of it for us, so... Right, so... By the mid-70s, you were... you had your own production thing going, obviously. Yeah, because, like, within no time I had seven songs in both charts, with five in the two top tens, one and two, four, five, six. You know, and they, they call me Phenomenon. So it's like, and, and with all of this, there weren't not much happening for me financially. It was like, hey, hey, Phenomenon and the fame. So I did one song, I, I did a cover version of War, World is a Ghetto and Call it Streets in Africa, which was a different thing from Toasting, you know, it was singing this time, and. There's a lot of people who say, oh boy, you can't sing, but financially I was better with that song than doing all what they said I can do for people. So that was when I started to develop with the African daughter, Hell is for Heroes, Hot Cross, Bun, Ten Against One, Two, Hit the Road, Jack, every nigga. It's just, you know, I start working for Big Youth. Well, I mean, all of these records that you mentioned um, established you as the a new kind, a new style of DJ, and entirely from the first generation, like you, Roy, and them. Definitely, it's it's a revolution, you know, of naturality. You understand, cause like I tell you, we know what we have, we know what we're doing, man. God, this thing is not no put on or take off, like. Some people say reggae music, some saying raga and whatever. Well, me say jam music, cause people need to make statements, cause music has no language and no barriers. Um. <coughs> Sorry. remember you at this time in, in uh, the UK when you were touring. Um, fantastic crowds turning out like as big or if not bigger than people who were coming for Bob Marley at that time. I mean it truly was. A yeah it is a definition but like in this world that we live in you know I really don't know. Like as Consciously, man, consciousness, because, like, I, I would think that I inspire Bob Marley, because, like you say earlier in those days, back in the 70s, and in other words, Bob Marley respected me, not, not the people that go around him, the man in himself, because, you know, even in France, I could see it in books where people interpret it, because he was my greatest fan, and I was the greatest fan of Bob Marley also. You understand, but like it got you changed. This thing, music, a lot of part of music is like politics, man. When people don't have you to do what they want to, you know, they never deal with you. And then people say that you're difficult to deal with, but it's not so, because they never deal with the man. Um, can we just hold it there? Eh? Hold it. Uh, before we before we start again, is um, when you went in those days when you went into the studio, you had a whole LP ready to go in your head lyrically. 
and yeah. you just Tell us a bit about how you would make some of those albums, put them together. All right, just ask the question again. Right. Okay. Um, tell us how you made um, albums like um, Progress and... Um, no, Scream and Tell that we dealt with already. With, with Percy, that's an early one. It's the, late, it's the self-production I want to get into all when all you're right. producing yourself. How you yeah. go about that? Well, like I say, it's just a flex at the time, like, I know what I am doing, right? In those days, journalists all over the world would call me like a human gleaner, all right? It's just like I said, it's naturality. It's not something that your bill or puts on. Because one great thing is not to lose common touch with the people, right? I live with the people. Seen? I seen violence and strife in the city and mischief on the streets thereof. Seen? I seen people that they see are bad who I know is good people because from evil come good. So inspiration goes through the vibrations of the time. You understand me? So philosophically, which some people might interpret as ideologies, but you know, through philosophies and the kind of treatment, injustice, violation of human rights and all. So all of them things tied up within my body and in with my head. So statements come when you get rid of them. So, so you understand? So it's like my pen is already right already in here. Even today, there's, I have songs up and songs written inside of me. So if I need to make I said to fit it, I do that. Or if I listen to the beat of a sound, I know that's where it is. That's where the inspiration comes from. Because I believe in the Almighty, you know. And if you speak of the Almighty and the truth, when you open your mouth, that's how those albums make, man. Um, we'll go back to Don's question now. Um, when you were playing Tipitone and those sounds, how would the clashes go? I mean, tell us about some of the some of the some of the other sounds that the, that you flop. In those All right, hear this. It's not like a boost. I and what you know, I never sing and call my name and boost upon exalt upon my name. But I, I, I just as people seen big youth within that time, I'd seen myself as the people do as a new arising, somebody coming and trying to play against me and tip out. It's like you come in to challenge Muhammad Ali and you can't beat the man, so it was just naturality, you know? Anything come, we thump them down with, so, you know, and it's not that kind of war and talk. We will mount a DJ and tell him, find himself in some other places, because this thing is not for him, because King Tubbies was the big song, that is Daddy Uri song. Daddy Uri exile in London, at the arising of Big Youth and Hi Roy come to take up the challenge that night with Tubbies. And boom, 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 but we had melody and sweet talk and God talk. So, it's no challenge, you know. But, you know, you have great sounds. Like, it's a different thing within that days, you know. People, People would compete to do better. You understand? Because in those days, you have great sound like Sir George, the Atomic. You understand me? Emperor Fiat comes in. We had Ken Tone. You know, the great King Tubbies, Sir Mike, Sir Naya. So, you know, it was just music in one joy and two sound. It, not too much clashing, it's too much buckles, you know? Yeah, I'd like to know the inspiration for Dreadlocks Dread, because that was a major tune. Right. Did you bring Rasta into the foreground, really? All right. So you want answer to that? Well, Dreadlocks Dread now, you know that. In the early days, you know, the system fight Rasta, you know. You understand? So being a dreadlocks, you have people pine finger on you, man. You understand? You deal with all a man's daughter and him don't like it, so... 
That's why my inspiration comes because the dread them love it and the daughter them must scrub it. You understand? And you notice even that song I say I would really like to find out what love is. Cause a man would say it's love to you but deep within his heart is war. You understand? So in that song we try for sure you say what we really need is understanding. Understanding of bring people together. Cause love is words, is it? What kind of music were you listening to, Big U? Because I noticed in one of your tunes you use that line, automatic pistol, remote control. You know, Last Poets, man. Last Poets, them guys is... Them people just crazy, you understand? Those kind of music that they did in those days, it's like music that has been blacklisted by the system, but that is the music that reaches us, you know, related to love, related to life, and related to war, related to death, so... You know, to me, that's the kind of music that should be on top because it's teaching people to come together and not war. We're not, we're not in for guns and crime and sin. So, like, like I say, music now, Mr. Mammy deal with music. Music that have no barriers. You understand? Beethoven, jazz, anybody. Anyway, I can pick a good soul. It's music I deal with. And I pray thee, another Rasta classic. That tune? You can tell us anything about that tune? Yeah, man. You know, the early days when we were youth and we used to lick chalice, man. Even if we not a whole yard lock up, man, you hear police are tear down the fence and you're liable for go to jail for smoke a spliff and them look at herbs, you know. So th those songs of David is the songs them that we learn to pray and to keep us alive and to keep Babylon from molesting us because those are prayers with devotion that guide us along the way, you know. You understand me? So, it's true them song. More time why you don't get more of them songs like from Jayut. It's true I don't want to come too biblical, you know, cause it's man version and reversions of God words, you know. But we reach a stage where we sing it through is our prayer them and we can interpret it and bring in the Lord God Jerastafari within the power of that glory. I want to ask you a question. The name, Screaming Target, where does that name come from? A movie. All right, tell me, can you say that? I don't remember who starred. I don't remember who starred that movie or not, but it come up like this. It was Clint Eastwood with Dirty Harry, which was a crazy gun movie, man. Then some blow come up with this Screaming Target, and this man was, oh, this gun man was crazy and what Clint Eastwood dealing with, so. I just make a room where I, I just, what do you call it now? Just make fun of it that Screaming Target was ranker than Dirty Harry. You know what I mean? Because if, 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 you, check, if you check the song Screaming Target, you know, it's a song where it was teaching people not to be illiterate. You understand? Because they must go to a literate place and come get civilized. So it's really an educational song, Screaming Target is just like reference. You understand, because we need that joy more than even what Screaming Target had to offer in the movie of being literate. Another LP I'd like to ask you about, Chichi Ron. How was the LP put together and everything? That, that, that put together is like... If you could say when I made Chichi Ron or something so we know what you're talking about. Chichiron, Chichiron was made the same day when we did S90 Skank. See? And we did a, more, a couple more tracks like Leave Your Skank at Home. It was like two versions of that song. Prince Boss says a man who like to fight for his rights, you know, but... Why are we not getting the rights from Prince Boss than that, you know? It costs a lot of things, and sometimes when Sometimes when people come and talk to me about all them things, you know, it's like it just stir up my ego and put me back in the past blood. Sometimes you like to go around them, you know. Because they don't pay me and we still grieve and we still want to pay. Which of the producers, the early producers, did you respect the most or did you work with the most? Style, let me tell you that. Me get smart quick when me go make my streets in Africa and at Crossbone and decide to start. 
the Negus Nagas, which is the banner of the kings of kings, my lord. You understand? Rastafari, I know, up until today, none of them not treat me good. Right now, I try to quote back and have other people in London trying to see about my publishing and my right. Because I mean, I get no publishing from Gussie. I don't get none from Prince Tony with dreadlocks, dread true virgin, right? My, my other stuff. Make him come, make him come. Yeah, that's, this is a good point, this. You want to get this? No, I'm going to care, because them, them, them are them things every day. That's how me they're, talk, that's why they don't like me. You know, this whole point about that, the, the way the dealings went on with you and the early tradition, we want to get that pun film nice right. and for all. So go on again. Yeah, ask back a question. Oh. So the producers in the early days, did you enjoy your time with them? Any of them you respect? Star, I can't say that, you know. Only feel proud. So out of every out of every evil days are good. Only only Phil Pratt I like Mr. Prince Tony. Prince Tony Tony went through virgin and make his life. Got the re, re, the reality of Prince Tony, big youth is so sharp and ready for the world that Dreadlocks Dread wasn't a completed album. If you come to check the understanding of it, it's like they took Marcus Garvey from Jack Ruby, who has passed away. And he took Yabby Yo, Lightning Flash, and we got job from Yabby Yo. And he had Dread, Naughty Dread, what she want. House of Dread, Train to Redisha. It's about five songs on that album, and they put it together with some rhythm, and some guy even blowing some things that people thought it's just me who did. No publishing, no rights. Gusty come the same thing went to church and no rights. I start even doing my thing, think that things would be better and church and still infringe me on my rights from the 70s even up until today. I even got to London when you see me at the rocket the other day and find out that you have artists like myself collecting people, publishing new setup company and not calling a name on that. But the world I know about it soon. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there's loads of things, but most of um, Jimmy Radway, that's a producer who's always interested me because he, he's a one arm guy. No, a one foot guy. One foot, right. If you could, because um, he did an, a, a thing called The Best Big Youth, was that Jimmy Radway? Black Cindy, and I guess a version of. Ellen Sarah, right, and he, he did Modelizer, uh, and that version where I do say, you're gone, but already, with Desi Road, man, I go fight, man, for Dunza, that, that was a Jimmy Radway. Jimmy Radway is a, is a ghetto youth, you know? Maybe he's a social worker and a cabinet maker and whatever. Cause down at the ghetto, you know, you have people that have wits and skills. Like Bob Marley says, some have hopes and dreams and some have ways and means. So Jimmy Radway was like a politician within them days who reform and rebirth and take up art and craft and music for a trade, you know. And within those days, the social trend comes. So they were the ones that really discovered Big Youth between him and Gregory Isaac, knowing that he have a new youth. Um, how did you how did you come to meet Gregory? How did you first link with him? And Gregory Isaac is Kingstonian, you know. We were born and raised in the ghetto, man. So somewhere along the line, we know a tooth, even out of the music. So because Gregory Isaac is a great believer, I'm a man that could see things, because like I said, Greg Isaac is the man that put me on record and still he was doing record before me and I I reached to that heights and I always team with Greg with Dennis, Leroy, Sibley and the Ed Tones. Remember Marcia Griffiths and Judy Mowat and Rita Marley sing with me before Bob Marley. Cause we made hit. We made a hit every nigga is a star 75 before the gang put the high trees together. So it's like 
The youth was, was the leader of the family and I always keep the family together even though a lot of the family look like them keep me out. <laughs> um, when we were in London, you um, mentioned to me about why you'd been out of music for so long. Would you care to give us that one again for the camera? Like I say, you know, if you notice today that I mean that small in the Hall of Fame. So it's what we fight for, you know. We was trying, remember, say, the whole Rasta concept of the music was to bring the unification of mankind, you know. It's not a race music, it's a music to bring people together. So all of that goodness that we was trying to do, preaching love and unity, togetherness, people always People always see it as an opposition to what's happening in the world, in the part of the system. Because sometime in the 80s, they did a review on reggae music and said that it come to upset Western culture. You understand? And they targeted Mali and we sight the gang go down. And we watch it. The system start to... You know, bring people into it that get nasty. Cause in 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 that day you'd find a look at you with more things say, boy, better me dread my head and show naturality. But today, you know, you hear a little baby man, them sing the most nasty song and them speak about the most crucialist gun. Alright? So that is the love that we was bringing people try to break so we watch it and like I said all over the years the seed that we planted I still live by it I still perform by my music and try to carry it to the corners in whatever little way and I know that gradually people so we build an audience you understand and I don't like what's happening so I leave it alone Instead of putting a song out there and it not going to reach, I, I believe it to know that big youth is happening, you know. I don't want to put the song out there because you want to deal with something that leading the people astray. You understand, but remember, Peter Church say fool some people sometimes, but you can't fool all the people all the time. So, as it was in that time, so shall it be now, you know. So you know that righteousness exalts a nation and sin is a reproach to man, so... More time, you know, I'm mixing a certain part of this, man, because the, the people, they must come talk about God and the love of you, man, and make we come together. Is that what want still? Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to have to pick you for one more thing, though. I want you to look on the camera and give me a couple of your intro lines, then, from some of your tunes, then. Just give me a one lick, man. I pray thee. Why do thee then rage and the people imagine of such pain things? Paul kings of the earth had set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. Yeah, man. Love God and live and yet him and dead, man. Rastafari. That be a big Respect. Like you come in to challenge Muhammad Ali and you can't beat the man, so it was just it all started, gossip started to come by, we do the killer for Joe Gibbs, so we stay, Foreman Fraser. <laughs>